So I just arrived at the expo for Glass City Marathon. It's time for packet pickup with my wife and my mom. They're here for the cheering support along with everyone from We Run 313. One cool thing about Glass City and this marathon or this race specifically is it's the 45th iteration of the Glass City Marathon, which means if you did early registration, you get this nice jacket. I don't know, I'm pretty sure, or I'm assuming that you get the jacket with packet pickup. So let's go see if I get that sweet jacket now or after the race is done. So we're at the hotel now. We've actually been at the hotel for a couple of hours. I've just been laying in the bed, trying to stay off my feet, stay as relaxed and stress-free as possible so that I have energy for tomorrow. One big mistake I made with my first marathon was I was go, go, go all day and didn't get to bed till extremely late. And I think that just taxed my body more than I realized the day before and I really didn't take the day to just relax. I did actually get the jacket at the packet pickup, which is cool. It's got the 45th Glass City Marathon emblem on it. And then I also got this pretty cool poster with the Glass City Marathon, all of the names of the runners. My name is somewhere around here. Even... Yep, right there. So really quick, I wanted to give a rundown of what I'm actually using uh, for marathon race, like what I'm using to fuel, my morning plan, uh, my fuel plan through the race, what gear I'm wearing. All right, so I'm kind of sorry for the mess, uh, but I have my roll recovery, the R3 and the R8. I'm running in the Alpha Flies, the Volt colorway. As you can see, here's my singlet with the bib already attached. 1094 is the number. I got a headband. I wore this in Detroit. This is actually my wife's, so it's kind of like a good luck thing. I am also running in the uh, Nike Aeroswift half tights, just some Nike socks, the multiplier socks um, that I'll be running in as well. So for fueling, tonight what I'm going to do is actually do these Morton 160 drink mixes. Um, and so what you do is this Morton bottle, this line right here, you can kind of see the arrow for it. That line actually uh, is 500 milliliters. So you can do 160 or 320. I'm doing two 160s because they didn't have any 320s um, when I went to the store, the running store to pick them up. So I'm just doing two 160s. I'll probably do this a few hours before bed and then add 500 milliliters of water, drink that. And then in the morning, I'm gonna wake up at 3.30. The start time is 6.30, so three hours prior. That basically is gonna supplement my typical coffee usage that I get in the morning because I'm most likely not gonna drink coffee in the morning. Same thing, I'll pour the 320 in, 500 milliliters, and I am good to go. I'll drink that, like I said, three hours prior to the race. I'll also eat this Bobo, the coconut. I also will have my Garmin 245 my stride foot pod that is charging and then for the race what i'm actually going to do is the gel 100 i'll have one like 15 minutes before i actually run and then i have four that i'm running with on the course and i plan on taking them every 40 minutes or every six miles i'm not really sure yet what that plan is um i think it's going to be every 40 minutes partly the reason I'm looking at 40 minutes is you'll see different runners talk about like how often they take them. Some people take them like every 5K, every 30 minutes. I did 30 minutes in Detroit. Here, let me move it back now. So I did 30 minutes every 30 minutes in Detroit and near the end by like the fourth or fifth Morton gel, it started to feel like too much. And one thing I've learned since Detroit is that your body really can only digest about 100 calories per hour while exercising. Um, anything you add starts to actually just compound a little too much for the body to digest. And I haven't been training my body to eat those Morton gels or take those Morton gels or any type of like substance or su supplement, whatever you wanna call it, like a gel or a drink. I haven't been training my body for 30 minutes or like a shorter distance. I've been training this entire time at 40 minute intervals. So I'm gonna stick with that 40 minute interval. It comes out to be about five to six miles uh, for um, each gel. Really depends on what my paces look like tomorrow. So that is the fuel plan. Like I said, 
drink tonight Morton 320, Morton 320 with caffeine in the morning, and then the Bobo bar, and then basically sipping on water, one gel 15 minutes before, and then four gels every 40 minutes. If I hit the three hour mark or sub three hour I'm looking for, four gels are all I should need. I fell apart in Detroit and had a terrible race. And <laughs> at that point, no gel really is gonna help you, trust me. <laughs> I learned that the hard way, my last gel, I thought might help like boost me and it did not. So four gels should be it as long as the game plan goes as planned or goes to schedule. If not, like I said at that point, gels aren't really gonna fix the problem. So I'm just gonna have to tough it out and get across the finish line. It's Monday morning. I am sitting in a chair at work. Well, I work from home, so, but I am uh, relaxing because my body hurts. I will do a like more full breakdown recap uh, later of the race, but let's just say <laughs> it did not go to plan um, at all. There was a hamstring issue that I had had for uh, roughly three weeks that I really hadn't said anything about because one, I didn't want to make any excuses about why I might not perform well on race day. And then two, I was actually trying not to like jinx myself by being like, oh, my hamstring hurts, my hamstring hurts. I wanted to see if like, if I kind of just leave it alone, uh, rest a little bit more during the taper, if I could show up to race day healthy. I felt healthy through eight miles and then the hamstring popped up and it just all fell apart. I ended with like a 3.29 something. I don't know, I'll put the official time uh, up here on the screen. <laughs> That's a loss, I did not hit my goal at all. I'm just happy I finished. I honestly wanted to DNF from like the halfway mark on. But like I said, that's a loss in my book. I'm nowhere near my goal and it's basically back to the drawing board, another training block and on to the Philadelphia Marathon. So that's in November. I'm just gonna keep working hard, add in some strength training and some other things to try and see if I can really improve just my overall form um, and then uh, minimize risk of injury, uh, like I said, because I had that hamstring issue pop up. But it is what it is. You can't control what happens on race day. You can only control how you um, basically respond to what happens on race day. And being able to finish and not DNF, I think is still a good response. So. That's it for this vlog. If you guys like this video, please hit that like button. Leave a comment letting me know if you ran any races this past weekend and how they went. And as always, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get updates on when I'm uploading my next video. Thanks for watching.